Hey everyone, how you doing today? Topic number three is going to be one of those thought-provoking ones, something maybe we none of us have thought about yet, and that is what do we do or how do we get ready for the next recession, right? We are, we are coming out of this one. Uh, I think everybody sees the next year being, for the most part, good, uh, but I'm here realizing and I want you to remember that recessions come and go. Uh, we will have another one. We are just going to be in a very different place. Uh, you know, the Great Recession, we spent about $800 billion. This event, which was more than a recession, it was a health crisis. We're spending $6 trillion or more. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just here sitting going, hmm, what do we do next time? So I wanted to ask Greg about that. How you doing, buddy? Doing good, Michael. How about you? I'm doing well. Uh, I am uh, very excited about what I see coming in 2021 and 2022 from a GDP uh, unemployment. I think all of it gets better from here. But as someone who's invested in, in seeing economies and, and economic cycles turn, I, I thought we should at least talk about, you know, do we spend any time thinking about the next recession? Do, is there anything we should be doing different? Or do we just enjoy the, uh, the good times for the next couple of years? Yeah, I think all of the above. So I think the Fed and Treasury have taken recession off the table. Um, you know, the question is, how long can they sustain it? And nobody knows the answer to that, you know, because they have nowhere else to go. So if the economy starts, you know, tanking, there's really nothing else they can do. They've deployed everything they could possibly do. I mean, there's a few little things that people are talking about, but, you know, it's, it's really interesting. So for people to understand recession is simply, you know, an economic downturn that's sustained for, you know, a, a period of time, a long mm -hmm. period of time. Uh, you know, a year or two, something like that. And I think it's what, you know, certain percentage of reduction in GDP, 10% or something, and or maybe that's depression. And depression is a deeper, longer sustained economic downturn. So a recession is simply <clears throat> an economic downturn that's sus sustained over a long period of time. So yeah, <clears throat> when the pandemic started, that's what we were getting into was recession. Mm -hmm. Fed and Treasury jumped in, fired the cannons, yeah, and pulled us out of that. But not every everybody everywhere. There's still parts of the economy that are very, very uh, in distress, that are hurting, that are suffering. So we haven't rebounded by any means. You know, we are still probably technically in a recession. I guess if you looked at the real numbers and if you took all that artificial um, stimulus out of the equation. Mm. So the question is, where does it go from here? So we, you know, we get vaccinated, we get COVID behind us, we get the economy open back up, everybody's traveling, going to events, hotels. You know, all that is still going to take some time to get back to full capacity, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, another year or so before everybody's comfortable getting back out like they were, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then the question becomes, well, how much money do they really have? So the people that have been hurt, you know, during this, that lost their jobs, lost their businesses, things like that, you know, they don't have that discretionary income, that disposable income that they had before to spend on travel and this and that and the other. So it'll be really interesting to see what it looks like when we come out of this, how long-term and sustainable it is. And then what does the government do? You know, they just passed 1.9 trillion. None of that is really making a dent. I mean, you know, there's some families are going to get 1,500, some might get 10,000, depending on how many kids you have. But for those families, that's not a lot of money based on what they've gone through and, and come through. So the question is, what kind of an impact is that going to have? Be a little shot in the arm, you know, no pun intended during this time period, but, um, <laughs> you know, once that's done, because there probably won't be, especially if we're vaccinated, we're through it, there's probably not going to be any more stimulus checks. The unemployment bonus is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Moratoriums on evictions and, you know, mortgage for forbearance and all that stuff will be over. Mm -hmm. So what's, what are the effects and impacts at that point? And where are we, um, you know, as an economy, not even not only on a national scale, but on a global scale, because it is a global economy now. It's macro. You know, we're we're not isolated anymore. So, you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see how things shape up and how they unfold once we get to the other side of this. Nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. Nobody, I mean, we're we're experimenting with MMT, modern monetary theory, you know, which is basically creating as much debt as you want, putting as much currency into the economy as you want, because we're the creator of it. Mm -hmm. We create the currency that we are, you know, borrowing, you know, and we're servicing the debt with created money. If you lever our GDP, we can borrow 30, $40 trillion and be okay mm -hmm. based on our GDP. 
if you look at a debt to income ratio as a country, mm -hmm. you know, we could essentially go that far with it. But the question is, are, are there still buyers at the end of the day besides treasury? And then what's the real impact of that? Mm -hmm. So again, we haven't seen since 2008 and nine, it's just been steady uphill. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen inflation. We haven't seen recession. We haven't seen anything until the pandemic. We were just on a tear yeah. since 2008 and nine, largely due uh, mostly due to physical, fiscal policy, quantitative easing, you know, and interest rates. Yeah. It is going to be interesting because, um, you know, I, I'm, I've often asked, I, I like to read about history a lot, certainly economic history. So one of the periods I read about years ago was the roaring twenties, right? 1920s and the great depression, mm -hmm. how, how that set up and what was done or not done ultimately impacted the reset or the, created a depression that was an extended, you know, economic down cycle. So what I'm looking at right now is, and I'm just curious what you think of this. I think what we are likely going to have is something similar, although collapsed. So the roaring twenties were essentially really what they are. It was a decade of, of, of economic prosperity. What I think we're going to have is we're going to have a half, half a decade, whatever that's called four or five years. Mm -hmm. And then what's going to happen is we are going to have an economic downturn sometime between three and five years from now. And I, to your point, I don't know what the Fed, the Treasury, I don't know what their arsenal, I don't know what their appetite is going to be. Because what we have learned is the, the medicine that the Treasury and Fed is, is to lower rates and shove money into the system. But that impact is becoming severe, right? If it was 800 billion needed in the great recession and now 6 trillion, mm -hmm. what do we need next time? 28 trillion or, you know? What, yeah, maybe 30. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, at some point yeah. the numbers get stupid and you've just- Well, got and I'm looking at it since, you know, while you were talking and there's been, you know, depending on which article you read, 30 to 50 recessions, you know, since, um, you know, the forties or somewhere around there, the thirties and forties. And, you know, again, it's just a, you know, little downturn in, you know, in production in GDP and output. That's what defines a recession. It's a widespread economic decline that lasts for several months. Mm -hmm. So it could be three months, four months, six months that you've had, you know, economic decline. GDP output is mm -hmm. what economic decline is. And I think depression is where you get 10% or more for a sustained period of time. Yeah. So, you know, we've been through several, um, you know, it's just, it really is interesting when you think about, you know, what a recession really is. And then, you know, your next question, how do you make decisions? What do you prepare for? And how do you um, plan moving forward? So, you know, you always plan, you always, you know, uh, plan for the best, prepare for the worst. So when yeah, you're making I like that. your observations, your, an, your analysis and, and underwriting and, um, you know, uh, calculating risk and, and you know, uh, assessing risk, estimating risk, you always want to say, what's the worst case scenario? How am I wrong? What's the cost of this miscalculation? And can I afford it? Can I withstand it? What's the end result? So as long as you understand the risk and you accurately calculate the cost of that risk and you know that you can withhold, you know, with, withhold that hit with, you know, and withstand it and come through, then you're okay. So that's really what you got to look at. Times are great. Let's, let's go with that. But here's the worst thing that can happen. Can we handle it if it does come to, to fruition? Yeah. And then one thing we've learned in this cycle and I've seen in other cycles is you don't bet against the Fed, right? We learned that <laughs> big way in this crisis, right? When they came yeah. out with the bazookas and the B-52 bombers. And what does that mean? So yeah. don't bet against the Fed, you know, means, okay, where are they pushing investment mm -hmm. into risk assets? So that's what that means. That means you don't invest in anything else because they're forcing you into risk assets. So don't go against that because right now you can't. You know, you're going, you're kind of come out on the losing end of that stick because they've got unlimited financial yeah. guns that they're firing at this thing. Yeah, they're just gonna they're just gonna keep it on autopilot. Just brrrr. yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, so that's that's what I think about now because again, I'm always look trying to look a little bit into the future. Again, I see next three to five years being good, uh, but I do think there's a price to pay. Right, it's kind of like a party you go to and you stay one, you know, you stay an hour too long and people go from being happy to sloppy drunk. You know, it's, it could be, you that. would think, but you know, we've been on this path yeah, and we haven't, we haven't paid a price. We haven't been largely affected. And, you know, and there's, I mean, the, some of the smartest people in the world on both sides of the argument are studying this yeah. and nobody knows, yeah, nobody sure. knows the real answer. Nobody knows the right answer. And what's really interesting to think about is 
And, you know, let's pretend you're an investor and you've got money you need to put at work and I'm mm -hmm. the United States, okay? And you know that I can continue to print money to service the money, you know, the debt that you're lending me. So you're lending me money and there's an interest payment mm -hmm. and I can print money to keep servicing that debt. I mean, you're going to keep lending me money? Yeah, probably. Yeah. You know, I mean, because at the end of the day, you know, the, the dollar is still the world's reserve currency. Nothing, nothing's going to replace that. I know there's people out there that say, you know, what about China? China is going to become the world's reserve currency and whatever they use in China, yen, or I don't know what it is. Yeah. But, well, yeah. I think it's the Chinese yuan, I think. Or yuan, remembi? Yeah. Remembi. I don't know. Whatever. Chinese whatever. currency. But that's just not going to happen. You're, you, you will never see a communist country become reserve currency. It just yeah. isn't going to happen because it's yeah. what? Yeah. yeah, the rule of law. So the United States is the only country in the world where law reigns supreme, regardless of what's going on. <laughs> yeah. We saw it play out yeah. and the rule of law won. Yeah. So that's why our currency and we're the biggest GDP. Now we might get surpassed at some point as you know, on a GDP level, but but not on our currency. That's yeah. not going to happen because these other countries, especially communist countries, as you are seeing, they can come in and shut things down, turn things off you know, make people disappear. I mean, they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen in this country. Now, I know people will argue with that and conspiracy theories and all that. But at the end of the day, this is a free enterprise economy. You know, the people still make the rules, make the laws. You know, sure, we could go socialist and all that kind of stuff. But that's not communist. There is a difference. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're still a free country at the end of the day, even if you have social policies largely at play and more of a social socialist type government, we're still a free country. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is interesting stuff. Uh, thank you very much for your time. These are always great conversations. I appreciate you dancing with me as we go through these interesting. Yeah, topics. it's interesting to think about, you know, it's just I, we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. Thank you, buddy.